Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your vandal solenoids on your E92 or any other BMW that has the N55 engine. So this particular car that we have right here is a 2012 335i, like I said, with the N55 engine. The issues that he's experiencing with this car are mainly like a rough idle um, and also a uh, check engine light every now and then related to like a camshaft timing error or a code like that. We've already done the walnut blast because that's usually the first thing that you should do if you're having rough idle and no misfires. So walnut blast is the way to go. We've already done that, but he's still getting those rough idle and also those timing codes. Usually the timing codes do point to the vano solenoids, especially if you're not really, you know, tuned up or anything like that. Yeah, you're pretty much stock. This is where I would go first. You can try to clean them, but they're not that expensive, so it just makes sense to go ahead and replace them. Um, you can get the aftermarket ones. I've actually had good luck with the Vico brand, no issues there. Or you can even get the genuine ones, which are a little bit under $200. Um, or if you really wanted to, you can try to clean them and see if that helps. But anyways, I'm just gonna show you how to remove them and put these new ones in right here. If you do wanna replace your solenoids and buy new ones, I'll have that link down below. Let's just get to it. So a quick overview of what you're gonna to have to do to get to them first is you are going to remove this air duct, also the fan, and you can remove this engine cover if you want to, you don't really have to, but it does make it a little bit easier. And then just make sure you have a bunch of rags because some oil will spill out. And if your new solenoid came without the gasket O-ring, make sure you have that as well. And it makes sense to replace both at the same time, so make sure you have both of them. So first to remove this air duct, you're gonna to to remove these two T20 screws. And there's a tab on each side of this cowl. There's a tab on each side. So just release the tab. And you're just gonna twist and pull out. On this particular car, we've got a CSF aluminum radiator, which has these 10 millimeter bolts instead of the standard Torx that you would find on a stock one. So we're just gonna have to do that. Whenever I say 10 millimeter, yours is probably gonna be a Torx, so just look at it before you go and proceed. Regardless, you are still got to remove this line from the top, which is held into these little clamps. So just lift it up. You also got to remove this connector. There's a tab on each side. Push both tabs in, one right there and one right here, and then lift up. I was gonna scoot this out of the way. Let's go ahead and remove this 10 millimeter bolt. Now if you have an automatic, you are gonna to have to also take the covers off from the bottom. That way you can remove the bolt for the heat exchanger that goes into the fan shroud itself. So we've already got the cover off. The cover's just held in with a bunch of eight millimeter bolts and screws. So just remove all of those first and that way you're at this level right here. And now here's the one single screw that's holding this uh, automatic transmission heat exchanger to the fan shroud. It's a T25. Good. So now on the CSF radiator, we've got a bolt that holds this tab in on the fan shroud to just keep it in place. If you just have the stock one, you're just gonna have a tab. What you have to do is just push the tab. That way it'll release it from this clamp. So for us, we're just gonna loosen this bolt and we should be good. Now with everything out of the way, we're just gonna lift the whole fan assembly off of the actual radiator and just lift it up and out. One thing you wanna be careful of is your stock charge pipe, if you have a stock one, there's gonna be a rubber mount that's attached to the fan shroud itself and make sure that you're lifting this tab where I remove my bolt on the aluminum radiator. If you have the stock one, you're gonna have a tab, so make sure you push the tab to release it from its housing. Besides that, you should be ready to just lift up and out.
Now when you're pulling the fan out at the bottom when you have it lifted up, it might get stuck on these tabs on the radiator. And if it does, you're just going to have to reach from underneath or stick your hand through here and pull the bottom of the fan a little bit out. That way it clears these. Now I'm going to remove this upper cover. That way we have a better you know, viewpoint for the camera as well. You don't necessarily have to because there's enough access for it, but we're just going to go ahead and do it anyways. So in order to do that, all you do is lift up in the front. And you slide it out. So one thing you want to be careful of is there's these two grommets on the other back cover that this slides into. So we're already missing one, but if it falls out, just put it back in. That way you don't lose it. So now you can see the solenoids. This metal clip is on one of them and the other one's right underneath it. But what we're going to do is we're just going to clean up all this area because you don't want any of this dirt falling into the engine when we pull the solenoids out. All right, so I've got it cleaned up a little bit. Now you can see both of these metal clips. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove both of these clips. It's a good idea to go ahead and label them. So I would do is like put one for the one that's on the top, two on the bottom. Uh, you shouldn't really be able to get them mixed up, but just in case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove both of these connectors and then I'm going to clean it up some more. That way when we pull the solenoids out, we don't have to worry about any debris getting in. So to remove the connector, you have to push the metal tab in and then pull the connector off. Show them. The way to do it is you push this tab in and you pull the connector off of the actual solenoid. Now do the same thing for the bottom one. So you can see the bottom one is more of like a 90 degree connector compared to the top one which is just like a straight connector. And the top one comes from underneath from a different harness and the bottom one comes from the harness going up to the driver's side of the engine. All right, so we're going to start off by removing the bottom solenoid first. That way the oil that spills from there will not get on the other solenoid. So just held in with one 10 millimeter bolt where you can see where my finger's pointing. I've stuffed a rag underneath the solenoid. That way whatever oil comes out will be caught by the rag and not go to the rest of the belts or anything like that. So we're going to remove that 10 millimeter bolt right here. And once that one's out, then we can pull the whole solenoid out. There's the bolt. Now let's remove that solenoid and put the new one in. To remove it, all you're going to do is you're just going to twist it around. That way it releases like the, you know, the seal from the O-ring and pull it while you're twisting it. All right, so when the solenoid comes out, you're going to have an O-ring as well as this plastic spacer. So make sure you get both of them out. Sometimes the O-ring will be stuck in there, uh, but you'll get the plastic you know, spacer out. And it, what does help is you want to twist it around while you're pulling it off. That way it actually releases from the O-ring and then you can pull it out completely. Now here's a new one that we're putting in. So when you're putting the new one in, make sure the surfaces are all clean. Also lube up the O-ring with some fresh oil or some silicon spray, that way it can flash off. Now when you're installing it, you can also twist and turn it to get it to sit all the way in, but you wanna push it until it's flat against the actual head. Once you have the solenoid installed, you should still be able to turn it around. Um, so when you're able to turn it, just make sure you turn it until all the threads line up with the hole. That way you can put the bolt back in. Once again, this is a 10 millimeter bolt. So you wanna hand thread it first. Don't drop it. Yeah, definitely don't drop it. 
I'm talking to you. Oh. <laughs> Butterfingers. Hey. With that one done, now we can work on the top one. The top one is the same exact solenoid. So both of these are interchangeable, but the top one is you know, just on the top, the other one's on the bottom. One's for intake, one's for exhaust. So the top one is the same way to remove it, just one 10 millimeter bolt, twist it, pull it out. But make sure that you cover the new solenoid that we just put in. That way if any oil that spills won't get on the new one. Here's the top one. As you can see, it came out without the O-ring, so we're going to pull the O-ring out as well. Where's the O-ring? It's in there. Let me So you'll hear it pop in once it slid in all the way because it'll bottom out against the head and its mating surface. Then all you need to do is just turn the actual solenoid itself until you can see the threads. That way the bolt can line up. And once again, it's a 10 millimeter bolt and we're gonna hand tighten it first. All right, so now that all of the solenoids are in and they're nice and tight with the bolt, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean out these connectors. If you have any dirt, debris, or any oil in them, you can just use some electronic contact cleaner, clean out the inside, the outside, that way you can just, you know, minimize all the dirt. So we're gonna start out with the bottom connector first. Make sure you're using the 90 degree connector, that's when that goes to the bottom. And all you need to do is just slide it right on. You have to push anything, just push on the connector towards the inside of the actual solenoid and you'll hear it clip in. Then we have the top one, which is just the straight connector. And just push the connector in and you'll hear it click in. And just double check, make, make sure all the wires are routed properly, they're not touching anything and you're good. All right, so now that you have the solenoids plugged in, you can go ahead and test out everything before you put you know, the fan and everything back in. Sometimes solenoids can be faulty. Um, usually they're not when they're new, but just in case it doesn't hurt to try it out before you put everything back together. So the fan will give you an error code, so make sure you have some kind of uh, device, like a BMW specific device, that way you can clear all the codes. Um, for us, we're just gonna go ahead and test everything out, clear all the codes, and just get back to you once I've done all that. All right, so we just finished test starting the car. Everything went well. The first couple seconds until the oil pressure builds up, you might have like a little bit of rough idle and you might have to clear the codes a couple of times, but once it settles down, everything should be good to go. Now we can put the fan and everything back together. All right, so for the fan, we're just gonna slide it down from right here. You might have to move it around until it starts sliding in. And you might have to reach down under, especially if you have an automatic transmission, to remove the heat exchanger out of the way, as well as lifting the fan, uh, bottom of the fan shroud over those two tabs on the radiator. So now when you're sliding it down in, like the last like about half an inch, you want to make sure this tab on the fan shroud itself goes over the radiator. There's a lip on top of the radiator, make sure it sits over that. You also want to make sure the alignment tabs on the sides of the fan shrouds, make sure they go into their own grooves. And you also have two more tabs at the bottom that sit into the intercooler. So make sure all those tabs are sitting where they belong before you push it down all the way. Now, if you have the stock radiator, you're gonna have a Torx bolt right here. Go ahead and put that back in. 
So for our CSF radiator, we have a bolt that secures this locating tab in. On your stock radiator, it's just going to clip into place, so you won't have to worry about it. Just double check and make sure it's in the right, you know, location tab. Now we can secure this coolant pipe back to where it belongs in these two tabs. And plug in the fan. You should hear both of the clips snap in place. Resecure the cover. Make sure the two tabs slide into the rear cover and then the two grommets up here. Just push them in place. Now for the air duct, slide it into place a little bit. We're going to secure this to the air box. Each tab should click in on each side and then you just want to wiggle this around until it lines up with the screw holes. And once again, these are T20 screws. And now finally, underneath the car, let's hook up that heat exchanger and all the covers. Now here are the two tabs I was talking about on the intercooler that the fan shroud has to sit in. And here we have the heat exchanger that just slides into place and is held in with one T25 screw. Now finally, you have all of the covers which are held in with eight millimeter screws and bolts. I don't have to put the cover on just yet since I have to do other work on the car. And I'd like to thank all of the members that have joined the channel. It really does help us a lot, especially in order to make videos like this. It just helps us tremendously. We really do appreciate all of the support. And make sure you go check out all of our other social media, show us some love there. Besides that, that's it for this video. Make sure you leave a comment down below for any other future video suggestions or if you have any questions. And thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video.